Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, this program, as you know, goes out after the watershed. Uh, this is the time on TV when all children under 11 are deemed not to be viewing in case they see something that they shouldn't. Instead, they're upstairs in the rooms watching a video of Deep Throat. <laughs> The watershed is actually at 9pm, after which you can say or show things that earlier could possibly corrupt young and immature minds. 9pm was chosen, apparently, because it's the time Mary Whitehouse goes to bed with a good book. <laughs> and burns it. <laughs> anyway, now all the kids are in bed, let's talk about something that we don't normally talk about when they're around. Like kids. <laughs> I can't stand them. <laughs> Snotty nose, loud mouth, repugnant little baskets. <laughs> no bastards. <laughs> you see, the problem is, every generation of adults is going to have to find a way of dealing with the rebellious children. Young children are the same as they ever were until they pass through the poo stage. <laughs> now, every parent knows about the poo stage. This is when the child is that age when poo is the most hysterical word in the English language. <laughs> Everything is poo. Hello, what's your name? Poo. <laughs> what's your age? Poo. <laughs> what do you want for dinner? Poo. <laughs> I'll give it to him. Serves him right. <laughs> then after the poo stage, kids used to go on to those sort of marbles and conkers and things, that stage, but, but they've cut that out. Now they go straight to the disco stage and Kylie Minogue, eh? from poo to crap in one go. <laughs> but what worries adults today is the sophistication of children. You see, they are so much worldly wise than we were. I mean, you ask a child today, what is 14 and 27? And they'll say, chicken chop suey and pancake roll. <laughs> It's not that they can't comprehend mathematics. I mean, far from it. I mean, when the tooth fairy came to my kid for the second time around and left exactly the same amount of money, there was an uproar. Huh? Hasn't the tooth fairy ever heard of inflation? <laughs> Doesn't she know there's an economic recession on? I mean, I can't believe it. My kid wants to index link his molars. <laughs> and children are so much more aware of the environment these days. I mean, in supermarkets, they know everything that you should or shouldn't buy. What's that you're buying, Daddy? Um, a bog cleaner. Is it biodisposable? <laughs> no, it's toilet duck. <laughs> and choosing a holiday isn't easy. Oh, we're not going to the Mediterranean, are we, Daddy? Oh, it's full of faecal matter. <laughs> It'd be like swimming in a cesspit. A cesspit. This, this from someone who just 18 months ago lived in the toilet bowl. <laughs> I'm stuck halfway up the u bend because Action Man had gone scuba diving. <laughs> A big bone of contention between adults and children is clothes. Can you get kids to wear short trousers? They don't want to know. No, we look ridiculous in short trousers. But now you look fine. No, we look ridiculous. Well, I wore short trousers. I wore them for years. I wore them till I got married. <laughs> you mean a thing? And that's for pumps. They wouldn't be seen dead in pumps. It's got to be trainers. High top trainers. With them sort of tongues that like cricket pads and... <laughs> such great immense things. The only thing you can't do is train in them. <laughs> Unless you're trying to get on It's a Knockout. <laughs> and of course, no kid can be seen going around these days without his bum bag. Do you know what they are? They're those nylon pouches they tie round the waists. Like the equivalent used to be a jamboree bag. You know, with sherbet and pink shrimps and love hearts and spangles. Oh, not anymore. Now it's bum bags containing a bottle of ginseng pills and vitamin A cream, royal jelly and a packet of Durex ribbed. <laughs> and that leads us on to something else, maturity. You see, it's not what kids do these days. It's that they do it so much younger. I mean, they reckon that in the 60s, the first sign of puberty in a girl was around about the age of 15. 15? Blimey, girls are 15 today, going through the menopause. <laughs> and what happened to innocence? Do you know that I'd recently picked up a copy of The Dandy? You know The Dandy? 
and there was an agony column in it. <laughs> an agony column in the dandies. <laughs> there was these letters like, Dear Irma, I'm nine years old and seven months, and I'm going out with a boy much younger than me. He's only just turned nine, and he's so immature. <laughs> He has an attitude problem about me going out with older boys. All because I accepted a date from Bill Wyman. <laughs> he's taken this very badly and he's threatened to take an overdose of Lego blocks. <laughs> it's no joke, last time he tried it he was in agony and passed two cranes and a dumper truck. <laughs> and there's another thing, toys. Kids' toys, they give me nightmares. They're horrendous things. Have you seen them? I mean, do you know about Transformers? Like, if, if you're not parents, I've got to tell you about Transformers. These are, these are sort of things that turn from homicidal, brainless mass murderers into motorway service stations. <laughs> or you can buy charming little models called skull-sucking alien warriors. Or even worse, teenage mutant ninja turtles. Have you come across these? They're sweeping the country. Teenage mutant ninja turtles are a bunch of reptiles who were deformed by radioactive retro mutant slime and they now live down a sewer led by a rat who teaches them karate. <laughs> what happened to Play-Doh and Hector's house? <laughs> I fear for the future, I really do. Do you know there's a toy shop opened up in Birmingham called Nazis Are Us? <laughs> And have you been to a kid's party lately? I mean, it used to be simple. You'd supply them with three times their own body weight in jelly, <laughs> pin the tail on the donkey, a magician, a game of British bulldog, two broken legs, and they'd all go home happy. <laughs> you can't get away with that now. I mean, you'd never get away with jelly. It's got to be creme brulee in the shape of George Michael's crotch. <laughs> And the entertainer, what chances has he got? I mean, these kids have been brought up on meatloaf concerts and Ozzy Osbourne. A clown called Mr. Cupcake with a red ping-pong ball on his nose. He's got no chance, has he? Within two minutes, they've copped hold of him, they've strapped a ghetto blaster to his head, they've wired his knees to the mains, and he's breakdancing into the creme brulee. <laughs> Instead, they've invented their own games to play now, like pass the joint. <laughs> Pin the willies on bros. <laughs> and an erotic game of leapfrog that bears no resemblance to the game. They don't climb off. I don't know what we're going to do about these kids. I mean, how can we warn them about the consequences of indulging in adult vices? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Go upstairs now, all of you at home, go upstairs now, go and wake all your kids up. Go on, go on. Bring them all downstairs. Go on, bring them all downstairs. And we're going to show them this little bedtime story. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, this programme, as you know, goes out after the watershed. Uh, this is the time on TV when all children under 11 are deemed not to be viewing in case they see something that they shouldn't. Instead, they're upstairs in the rooms watching a video of Deep Throat. <laughs> the watershed is actually at 9pm, after which you can say or show things that earlier could possibly corrupt young and immature minds. 9pm was chosen, apparently, because it's the time Mary Whitehouse goes to bed with a good book. <laughs> and burns it. <laughs> anyway, now all the kids are in bed, let's talk about something that we don't normally talk about when they're around. Like kids. <laughs> I can't stand them! <laughs> Snotty nose, loud mouth with pumble... <laughs> In my book, drugs are the biggest force for evil. 
in the world. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <coughs> Drugs ruin lives. <laughs> <laughs> Drugs kill. See what I So now, I want you to get out there on the streets and arrest anyone who looks as if you're taking drugs. You got that? Got it, got it. Sir. So let's get out there and make this a better world to live in. Okay, we're looking for smack, crack, ganja, horse, dodos, blueies, bennies, tabs, and shit. <laughs> Says here. What about that bloke over there? You reckon he's a junkie? He looks a bit happy. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. Okay, chummy, up against the wall. Spread your legs. You hear that? Up against the wall, spread them. You hear that? La problema. What do you say? I don't know. I think he's got him. Spread your legs and your arms. <laughs> so entiendo, senor. Lo siento. What did he speak? It's French. <laughs> do you know any French? Yeah, yeah, a bit. Okay, go on, try it. Voulez-vous uh, un armoire, maintenant? Okay. <laughs> what did you say? It's only a bit of French, I know. What does it mean? Do you want a wardrobe at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> it's plain clothes, Pickford's men now. Senor, no entiendo nada. I quiero ir, eh? Christ, what's French for spread? I don't know. Um, spread out. <laughs> spread out, legs, legs, legs. What's legs? Pantalons. Nice trousers. It'll do. Spread your trousers. <laughs> Don't just spread his trousers. Senor, <laughs> <laughs> quiero ir, eh? Just a minute, hang on, uno minuto, hang on. Okay, look, I'll, I'll spread my legs and then he can follow what I do. <laughs> okay, I turn to face wall like this and spread my legs, you see. Easy. I search pockets and trousers. <laughs> but I mustn't take hands off wall while he does this. No, leave hands there. Then he searches jacket. <coughs> What's this? I have found a quantity of drugs. Oh, I have been naughty. And <laughs> make a rest. Oh dear, I have been caught red-handed. Marijuana. Ah, marijuana. Marijuana, that's right. I think he's getting it. You want marijuana? No, 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 we don't want marijuana. I <laughs> said marijuana. We don't want marijuana. He's pretending to search me for marijuana. <laughs> oh, this is useless. Good marijuana. Eh? Colombian. Oh, God, he's Colombian. He's <laughs> <laughs> <Is he> Colombian. <laughs> You'll be here all night. Let him go. <laughs> I'd like a drink, please. Have one. To make sure it's cold. There will there be anything else, sir? No, thank you. Have one. <laughs> Any chance of a cup of Bovril? <laughs> Uh, this program, as you know, goes out after the watershed. 
Uh, this is the time on TV when all children under 11 are deemed not to be viewing in case they see something that they shouldn't. Instead, they're upstairs in the rooms watching a video of Deep Throat. <laughs> The watershed is actually at 9pm, after which you can say or show things that earlier could possibly corrupt young and immature minds. 9pm was chosen, apparently, because it's the time Mary Whitehouse goes to bed with a good book. <laughs> and burns it. <laughs> anyway, now all the kids are in bed, let's talk about something that we don't normally talk about when they're around. Like kids. <laughs> I can't stand them. <laughs> Snotty nose, loud mouth, repugnant little baskets. <laughs> no bastards. <laughs> you see, the problem is, every generation of adults is going to have to find a way of dealing with the rebellious children. Young children are the same, Bella or Elle or something, and I, I can't help myself, I have to sort of peep over a shoulder. <laughs> Guarantee this is going to be a really interesting article, it's always about health or humping or something. <laughs> transfixed with this stuff, you know. Uh -huh. Then you give the game away at some stage, we're going, five times a night! <laughs> to be fair, it's not the case with all women's magazines. I mean, you're on pretty safe ground with Woman's Realm or Woman's Weekly. I mean, their articles are all about knitting or recipes or royals. I mean, the ideal Woman's Weekly piece would be how to macrame Prince Charles out of pot noodles. <laughs> Other types of magazines you can only get in supermarkets, you know, like Family Circle. Family Circle, there's always a picture of Nanette Newman on the cover. <laughs> Inside, she exhorts you to save money by showing you how to make a cheap summer frock from two bin liners and a jiffy bag. <laughs> there's regular features like Thora Heard's aerobic tips. <laughs> or medical advice with headlines like, Kiss those painful hemorrhoids, goodbye! <laughs> But without doubt, the periodicals men love most are those no-holds-barred, it's a woman's world, so what are men for anyway type. You know, cosmopolitan, that sort of thing. They're always full of advice to women on things like how to get your man into bed. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what to do with him when he's there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how to get rid of him before the next one arrives in the morning. <laughs> There's always one of those questionnaires you have to fill in, like, is your man A, hunky, B, smooth, C, rough, or D, an amoeba. <laughs> Does he treat you with A, passion, B, lust, C, with desire, or D, dribbles? <laughs> I filled one in for myself once and I got 36 Ds. <laughs> in the summation at the end, it said, get rid of this tuss pot and try dating a corpse. <laughs> These magazines have horror pieces as well, only it's called the medical page. Right? <laughs> I didn't think you could have so many things go wrong with your body. It's like reading a Stephen King novel. I mean, <laughs> what is myalgic encephalomyelitis? <laughs> what are fibroids? What do they do in hormone replacement therapy? <laughs> I mean, good grief, if you're diagnosed with a good old-fashioned case of herpes, you're over the moon. <laughs> But it's the advice that doctors give women that's worrying so in these magazines. It seems to consist of regular doses of evening primrose oil, a herbal douche, or the woman has to feel herself all over every night to see whether anything new has appeared. <laughs> Are these doctors qualified? I mean, I have to ask because, get this, get this, they even tell the women to encourage the men to feel themselves. <laughs> Blokes have to feel their testes every six months <laughs> to see whether there's any lumps there. <laughs> six months? <laughs> watching that doesn't feel him every six minutes. <laughs> you could have a new hair growing in your nose before breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> you see, in truth, this is the sort of advice we should be getting in men's magazines. But instead we get those war games magazines like Professional Soldier and Guns and Ammo. These are aimed basically at middle management dipsticks who dress up in Bulgarian army surplus clothes and run around Epping Forest shooting little balls of paint at each other. 
<laughs> Isn't it nice to know that these highly trained killers are there to protect us? I mean, if a reunified Germany goes for the hat-trick, and it's possible, we can be safe in the knowledge that waiting for them at Dover are 30 estate agents armed with 10 cans of juleps. <laughs> a video these bozos can buy now. It's called Full Metal Undercoat. <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course, for men, if it's not violence, it's sex. You get magazines like Playboy, Mayfair or Penthouse. Do you know anybody who actually reads them? I mean, they could be written in serbo Croat and no one would notice them. <laughs> and why do news agents give all these soft porn magazines their own space on the top shelf? Why don't they put them with all the other do-it-yourself magazines? <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy your meal. <laughs> what? Gary, next customer's all yours. Good morning. Can I help you? Two quarter pounders. Thank you. Enjoy your meal. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, you didn't ask him if he wanted fries. What, chips? No, no. Fries, Gary. They're called fries. Well, if he wanted chips, he would have asked for them. No, no, no. That's not the point, though, is it, Gary? The point is that whatever the customer orders, you must remember to always say, Do you want fries with that? <laughs> right. Do you want chips? No, Gary. <laughs> It's okay, it's fries, and always remember to smile. Do you want chips? <laughs> what if he just wants a milkshake? Fries with a shake. What if he just wants fries? Fries with your fries. Look, <laughs> you, Gary, I'm watching you. Crew member of the month, five stars, and don't you forget it. Two, two, one, quick, two. Be a couple of minutes. Do what? If the customer orders something that's not ready on the hot plate, Gary, you must get it specially ordered. Well, how do I do that? I just showed you. You say, two, two, one, quick, two. Be a couple of minutes. <laughs> two chicken, one quarter cheese, big. No, no, no. See, nothing's arrived on the hot plate, Gary, because I could hear the words, you see. It confuses me. <laughs> I don't hear the words. Choo-choo, I've got a cheese! Choo-choo, one cheese! Be a couple of minutes. minutes. Much better, Gary. Right, I'm going over here to rattle the chip fryer in a self-important way. <laughs> Alan, could you mop the floor, please? Could you mop the floor? It hasn't been mopped now for nearly three and a half minutes, so... <laughs> with Another customer, Gary. Do you want fries with that? No, no, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Take your first, Gary. Good morning, can I help no, you? Gary. Where's your happy hat? Good morning, can Gary. I help you? I mean, how does the customer know, Gary? Go to the next till. How does the customer know? <laughs> how does the customer know he's walked into a fast food establishment, eh? Because I'll tell you why, Gary. Wherever he is in the world, he can walk through our door and the first thing he sees is a bloke in a paper Thunderbirds hat pushing him up for no reason. <laughs> Alan, Alan, we're getting rather busy. Uh, rope off another section of seating, can you? <laughs> <laughs> he's hopeless, isn't he? Hard to believe he's chicken griddler of the fortnight. Let's check more product, Gary. Uh, customer wants ordinary chips. Regular fries, Gary. And what do we use for regular fries? The manky paper bag. Right. <laughs> what do we use for large fries? The designer executive French fry pouch. Right, Gary. <laughs> Two dark cakes. You want what? An orange juice? Over there. Two, two, one, quite two. Oh, I wouldn't recommend the orange juice. I mean, the man from Del Monte, he say... <laughs> <laughs> that would be rude to a customer, Gary. You know the golden rule. The customer is always right. Who yours for chips? It's fries, you pillock. <laughs> two, two, one, quite two. Uh, crew leader, what's a thick shake? It's an Arab leader with a low IQ, Gary. What do you think? <laughs> Pull the lever there, you stick the cup under there. If it's coming out runny, stick a bit more of that in there, OK? <laughs> he says, do we sell fish and chips? We don't sell chips or fish. It's fries and fillet. What, the fillet? No, it's not fillet, Gary. It's fillet, OK? Oh, two, two chicken, chicken, one quart cheese, cheese, one fillet. Oh. <laughs> See, in the 90s, Gary, he's not interested in fish and chips. <laughs> do we do pizza? Pizza? Huh. Only the Italians could get away with charging four quid for posh cheese on toast. <laughs> Italian food, no spaghetti, ravioli. Ravioli? It's like eating two postage stamps full of sick. It's just all jokey beds. No, look, why don't you just have a burger? No, not even I can eat a donkey bed. It's like eating an old wallet stuffed with used odor eaters. <laughs> <laughs> Is that about right? Beautiful. Beautiful, Gary. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you. Enjoy, Enjoy your meal. <laughs>
Britain's motorists depend on the resourceful, skilled men and women who work for our motoring organisations. Men and women who are always equipped for any motoring emergency. Every officer carries jump leads, a full toolkit, a foot pump and a can of oil and petrol and most importantly of all, a jack. <laughs> And once his equipment has been loaded, he's ready to hit the road. <laughs> Colleagues from rival organisations are always ready to help. <laughs> Officers must be polite and courteous at all times, remembering to salute the motorists who are members of their organisation. <laughs> For the stranded motorist, knowing help is at hand is a great weight off his mind. Some problems just can't be solved in the field. And that's when the patrolman can provide his unique get-you-home service. what the problem, the motorist friend will always have a solution. Because he is not only an expert mechanic, he's also infinitely resourceful. <laughs> Remember, if you're in trouble on the road and you don't know which way to turn, the motorist friend is always there to lend a hand. Slide.